today we need to get into people saying Jimin has caused a change in their sexuality. We need to talk about Jimin shamed or people making up a raunchy tape. And then we have the Hive CEO speaking up about something. Say down please this Dave Desai, hate it or not, make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on. Grab your dumpling, taste filling mug merch, and let's go. We need to get into the CEO of Hybe and why he is getting into a little bit of controversy. If you're not aware of who the CEO of Hybe is, it has no longer been Bang PD for a long time. Bang has stepped down as CEO and has spoken out about just wanting to create and produce music because he is an artist that is what he does best. Now people might be wondering why he is still voting on things or still considered a chairman even after not being CEO. So Bang owns the company and no matter what position he takes on within the company, he is still owner, meaning the overall direction the company goes in will still need to be run by him. And what a lot of people don't know is that CEO and founder are very different. The founders of companies typically do take the role of CEO, but they don't have to. And sooner or later, founders will often give that role to someone who is either more equipped or has more experience. And then the founder takes on either a more passive role where they don't do much or they handle the part of the company that they are most passionate about. But since Bang PD had stepped down, I think the CEO role went into someone and then it repositioned to who it is now, which is Scooter Braun. Scooter Braun has a very aggressive growth tactic and it's very smart to give him the role and manage it. He has a lot of connections within the industry and since he has grown his own management company for so long, he knows exactly what to do and what direction to take in order to bring Hybe into this next level here in America. Of course, there's a lot of controversy with any big and powerful figure, especially someone like Scooter who has been called out by people like Taylor Swift and then armies don't want BTS to be involved with someone like that. And I won't get into that issue, but that's a very public situation that you can Google if you want to know. But recently, Scooter has been getting a lot of hate and hate outside of this controversy. People keep trending that they want Hive to step down and away from Zionism because they're saying that the artists in Hive are working with people who support genocide and Scooter is a Zionist, I believe, or at least supports Israel. And so people have been essentially asking him to step down to the point where Scooter actually addressed these issues recently in a story that apparently got him a lot more hate. So what did he say? He made a couple posts recently, including an interview that went viral where he talked about some of the crazy propaganda that is going on with both sides and asking people to respond with kindness with a general message at the end of the post saying that he does not support the death and hurt of another race or human being. And this answer was followed with people responding and saying that he is such a disgusting human being and that this reply makes them want to vomit. These people who say this, I want to say once again, are people who have no idea what Zionism is. There is nothing innately in Zionism that says kill another race. That's like saying because there's been crusades with Christianity that if you're a Christian, you support the history of war. The people who are attacking and hurting others happen to be Zionists. Not all Zionists are hurting people. He has said many times in his post that he wants peace, just like the rest of us. This is one of those things where if the fandom has already made up their mind that they hate you, you can't say anything to fix that. Him wishing peace now becomes manipulative, when in reality he is just responding and responding honestly. This is the reason why most of the time when things trend against the K-pop idol or a label, nothing happens. It's because the hate doesn't make sense and they never want an apology, either because when people do apologize, it's met with hate or people saying it's fake anyway. However, this is why I call working in K-pop to be signing a deal with the devil, because hopefully it's something you're passionate about, which is why you would even want to do it. But those who step into K-pop will be met with the most beautiful and wonderful people that support and love you. And then on the flip side, that literally want to stomp on you until you die. And so you get both extreme sides. Meanwhile, if you're someone who may be stepping into American pop, you might just get more neutral fans who don't hate you but don't love you but will still watch. It was definitely interesting, at least in the beginning, to see how people in America were adapting to the integration of K-pop. People were so hypnotized by Jimin, we still are, but especially during the Blood, Sweat, and Tears era and Fake Love era. People were just going crazy. Since the boys are enlisted in the military, there has been this collection of people re-watching and restreaming all old BTS content. A lot of the old reaction videos and stuff like that have just resurfaced and gone viral again. One particular joke that was huge back then was a lot of men saying that they have questioned their sexuality after seeing Jimin. One of the bigger ones was none other than PewDiePie. 
He made a joke about how BTS members individually are acting not that attractive, and then right after retracted that statement to say that he is now gay and likes men. This was an effect that the fandom called the Jimin effect, and once you gym in, you can't gym out. And then you had these big supporters like Jimmy Fallon who were showing his love of Jimin. And it became this big thing that a lot of straight men were infatuated with Jimin. If you remember, it was a bit of a meme as well, to people like Ollie London getting surgery to look like Jimin, and even it was believed that some men were wearing Jimin on their shirts. However, I cannot find photos of that anymore. These are things I 100% believe. Jimin has the power to change anyone into loving him because he has a very hypnotic look that borders on feminine and manly without it being almost too feminine. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but I do think if that was the case, it would have been much more difficult for Jimin to be accepted into the Western culture so fast because that was an issue other artists and famous people were struggling with. By the way, if you do want to watch and react with me to cute, funny BTS moments, we do react to those over on Patreon. I post daily there, and there's literally probably thousands of videos posted there the moment you sign up. So I hope to see you there. It's right at the top of the description. Of course, this also made Jimin an easy target for sexual harassment, comments, and people mocking his sexuality. Now, I want to make it clear, we obviously have no idea what Jimin's orientation is. His dating life is sealed, and that is done due to the nature of the industry, and it's also not for us to judge who he may or may not date in the future. With that said, there's many comments that are uncalled for and unwarranted. There's comments saying he is engaging in gay sexual activities, which is not a problem obviously, but it becomes a problem when it's used to mock as if it's something that would be bad. Oh, and then it's also used as a way to say that Jimin is less than compared to other idols who would be seen as straight. Recently, there's been photos and videos circulating involving Jimin and Bang PD. People think that the two are canoodling with each other, and then people making very unwarranted remarks talking about what Bang PD is doing to Jimin or whatever it is. Of course, the action is very inappropriate and makes it hard for me to understand why this is something that people are saying. It initially seemed that this idea came from people just overall very upset that Jimin was getting quote-unquote special treatment. However, that has shifted now as a lot of people within the fandom love to say that Jimin has not gotten any special treatment now and that special treatment went to Jungkook. And from this, you can see how fickle these opinions are, as we have even noticed how fast they change and shift. Of course, Jimin never had a tape or anything like that, however, it doesn't stop fans from editing things and then claiming that Jimin does. And this is something I can't understand, going to the lengths of literally editing and making something appear like something when it doesn't, because why? I understand a news company probably doing this in order to generate a fake story for ratings, however, a regular fan who just doesn't like the idol resorting to photoshopping and editing videos to make it appear like Jimin might be doing something he is not. Why? Don't you have better things to do? There's so much chores to do if you are living in a room. There's just not enough hours to do so many different things like laundry, cook, and then on top of that work, and then take care of yourself. Who on earth has time to photoshop fake things? I hope these people one day get karma for their actions and understand that these actions are not something that someone should be doing and I hope they eventually realize not only how cringe this action is, but that this was a phase and they need to heavily apologize for. Because this is literally the same as physical harassment. It does a similar thing psychologically to both the person in the content and also those who are watching and seeing it happen. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check on Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks this lovely comment right here. Love you. Bye.